Hello, I'm Joe Galvin, Chief Research Officer for Vistage Worldwide. Welcome to the Vistage Coaching Spotlight, a video series dedicated to exploring the challenges and opportunities facing CEOs and leaders around the globe. In each episode, we'll be speaking with some of the world's best and brightest executive coaches, senior mentors who are on the daily leadership crime with business leaders every day, guiding them to make better decisions and become even more effective leaders. Today, we're speaking with Vista's Chair Joe Schott about the challenges faced by small and mid-sized business CEOs today, and more importantly, what they are doing in response. Joe chairs Vistage CEO groups surrounding the Philadelphia area. Before becoming a Vistage Chair a couple of years ago, he was an 18-year Vistage member as he founded and led one of the largest beverage buying groups in the country. He also started two other companies and held multiple C-suite positions at others. Now he works directly, directly with over 30 CEOs on a regular basis. Welcome, Joe. It's a pleasure to have you with us on the CEO Coaching Spotlight. Hi, Joe. It's great to be here. And I got to tell you, I'm having more fun today as a Vistage chair than I ever had as a CEO. That, that's hard to believe because uh, based on our conversation, you had a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> you've had a variety of CEO roles. Tell us a little bit about your leadership climb and some of your most significant leadership accomplishments and learnings. Okay. Well, you know, when I, when I look back over the time leading the companies, it, it really came down to recognizing that I wore so many hats. I was so overwhelmed with everything, the day-to-day -day, in the weeds. And, and as I went through it, I realized as I'm growing, I became uh, the bottleneck for the company. Uh, you know, we all have a capacity. Um, I don't like to admit there's, a, there's one there, but we do. We all have one. And as CEOs, we have big ones, but we end up becoming the bottleneck for our company. And what I learned as I went along was to focus on three things as a CEO, building my team, building the culture, and, and working on the strategy. And if I could get those things down, I could scale the company. And you found those three things worked in all, all of the examples that we gave of your, your CEO background that worked in all big companies, small companies, startups? Yeah, I, I got to tell you, yeah, the, the, you know, the startups, you're it. You do it all. Um, you know, the larger companies, you still, you're st it, it depends on how you choose to run the company. But the, what I've seen and what I see with the CEOs in my groups, it, it, you are the problem as the bottleneck. You know, because you feel like you have to control everything. And when you when you learn to let go of that, when you learn to work on building your team, that's where your greatest success will come from. That, that that's that I guess if I look back on my my time, that's what I came away with is really being the secret to success. Well, Joe, you work and engage with small and mid-sized business CEOs every day. What's top of mind for them right now? <laughs> It might be easier to say what's not on their mind. Uh, you know, there's so much change and everything that's going on in the world. But uh, I'll, I'll rattle off some, but I'll tell you what, what I think is, is really uh, critical. But, I mean, we're talking a lot about cybersecurity and cyber insurance more, more so. I mean, that's a big topic these days. PE opportunities, the private equity out there. Uh, it's, it's almost everybody's being contacted. No. Um, accountability. And, and scaling your company. That seems to be a real top of mind. Recession planning, another big topic. And of course, you know, the hybrid model, working at home, uh, what should I do? And then hiring retention. But I'll tell you the number one, if I were to pick one of those in, in my whole group, I would have to say it's, how do I hold my team more accountable? And, and how do I scale my company? You know, accountability is such an important component before COVID, but now with the work from home, the hybrid, the remote work, it becomes even more critical. How do you how do you get how do you get CEOs to focus on that? Because that's easier said than done. Yeah, well, you know, it comes down to, to 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 the group helping each other kind of work through these things and talk about them. But the accountability piece, I mean, everyone comes in saying, "How do I hold these people accountable? How do I do it?" And it really comes back to what I shared with you at the beginning, where as a CEO, uh, when you learn to let go, when you learn to hire and find top quality people and build that executive team, uh, you begin to hold each other accountable to the things that you're doing. Uh, and, you, and you work on that. And it's working on team culture strategy. You know, I mean, that's really where it comes down. So to your, to your concept around the importance of the team, what do you see smart CEOs doing about building those teams? And you know, question two to that is, in this new environment of hybrid work and a post-COVID new reality, how does that change or has it changed? 
Yeah, that's a good question. I, you know, I, I said when you say smart CEOs, and I and I, I can tell you, I'm working. Every one of them I'm working with seems to be really smart. Um, what it, I would say, and this this might sound like a commercial, and I don't want it to, but I would say finding a peer group is what the smart CEOs are doing. Um, a, a lot of a lot of spe- people I talk to uh, are have CEO coaches. They hire them, and they and they're learning from that. That's good. That's all good. But finding that peer group, and it doesn't need to be a Vistage group. It could be another type of peer group. But um, I, I just getting the perspective from other CEOs that are going through their same stuff, sitting around your boardroom table once a month, that's what they're doing. They're gaining perspectives that they don't have themselves. You know, getting back to the team building concept, that's that's fundamentally changed as, as we're in this hybrid world and, and all the pressure and stress, we've got the, the great resignation, the millennials, disease, all changing the rules of the workplace. Everyone's still looking to hire. How do they go about building a team in this new environment? Are there are there a couple of rules or tricks that you see people doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, it, it is a challenge. It's it, the challenge today of hiring has gotten even tougher. Um, what one of the things that we've been learning about is we bring in some of these subject matter experts, and we've had some some people that work in the recruiting areas and come in. And we've learned we've learned that the the, the model of putting together a job description and sticking it out there on a web or hiring just a recruiter to go out. Unless you know what success looks like in that role, you're not going to be able to hire properly for it. And that's what we've been, we've been talking a lot about is what does success look like? And if the CEO can't define, and it has to be measurable, can't define what success looks like in a specific role, you need to figure that out before you even begin trying to hire somebody. Right, well, you know, everyone's hiring and you mentioned the importance of team. How do you really check for that in the hiring process? Or do you have to wait until someone gets in the office and interacts with folks before you can say, hey, this person fits or this person doesn't? How do you sort that out in the interview process? And to what degree do you just compromise because a warm body is better than nobody? Yeah, well, that's the one thing you really want to avoid is, is compromise when hiring. Uh, it brings me back to, to uh, w- as a member of, of a Vistas group, my chair used to tell me all the time when, when I'd make a bad hire, he'd say, Joe, no one hires 100%. No one. If they're telling you that, they're lying. And the truth is, if you can get 60% right, you're hitting, you're, you're, you're hitting a home run. Um, yeah, so w- w- when you go through it, it's really about doing all the pre-work first. And it's knowing what success looks like so that you can talk to them about, here's the challenges you're going to face. Here are the things that you're going to have to deal with. Bring them into to the picture. Really get them to tell you stories and examples. Um, you should be, if not already, you should be considering uh, doing some type of assessment process, you know, and knowing what that, what, what you're looking for going in. And, and that'll, that'll up your odds of getting the right person on board. Joe, thanks for that. That's great insight. It's great to hear that CEOs are taking that so seriously. Any final thoughts before we uh, say our goodbyes? Uh, final thoughts. Yeah, let's. Uh, well, I would tell you this. One one of the things I would recommend, and, and you, Joe, you're you're a big uh, proponent of this because I know you speak a lot about it. You know a lot about. It. You know, when we talk about leading indicators and and ITR uh, economics is just fantastic at it. I would say that you know today as a CEO, you want to know what those leading indicators are. You want to find out what they are and use them for evaluating cash positions and debt positions and so forth. You know, knowing whether you should be growing right now or working to hunker down. You know, that's what I think you should be focused on. So yeah, if that's a final thought, I would say that would be it. Well, you speak to a, a new reality, and that is the volatility that's going on, this concentrated volatility. Things are happening so quick that if you don't have your metrics down, if you're not listening to the right post, uh, you're going to be in trouble. Joe, thank you so much for your time today. Your insights were great. We really appreciate it. And thank you for watching the Vistage Coaching Spotlight. If you've enjoyed this talk, be sure to share it with your colleagues who you think will find it valuable. For more information and guidance on the top issues you're facing as a leader, visit www.vistage.com. That's www.vistage.com. I'm Joe Galvin, Chief Research Officer for Vistage, and this is the CEO Coaching Spotlight.